Did you know that one out of three deaths in Singapore is due to heart disease or stroke? Heart disease is the second highest cause of deaths in Singapore. The statistics may seem alarming, but with good understanding of how heart disease comes about, you can learn to prevent it and better take care of your heart. Our heart is one of the most important organs in the human body. Roughly the size of a large fist, it is also a muscle located between the lungs, just behind and slightly left of the breastbone that pumps blood throughout the body. It takes blood through the veins and sends it to the lungs, where blood is replenished with oxygen before pumping the oxygen-rich blood through the various arteries to the rest of the body. Sometimes, our coronary arteries that supply the heart with oxygenated blood can slowly narrow due to a buildup of plaque, which is made up of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substances found in the blood. Blood clots will then form around the plaque, blocking the artery. When the artery is severely narrowed, it disrupts the blood flow to the heart and one will develop coronary heart disease. Coronary heart disease can lead to a heart attack when there is a sudden, complete blockage of the coronary artery where the heart muscle is deprived of oxygen, causing damage and even death to the muscle. A heart attack causes parts of the heart muscle to die. If the damage is serious, the heart can fail. Dangerous heart rhythms can occur during a heart attack and the heart can come to a complete stop. When this happens, it is called a cardiac arrest. Survivors of heart attacks are at increased risk of recurrent infarctions and an annual death rate of 5%. This is six times that of those of the same age who do not have coronary heart disease. 30% of hospital admissions for heart attacks are recurrent heart attacks. So how do we recognize symptoms of a heart attack? The symptoms of a heart attack include prolonged severe central chest pain which cannot be relieved by rest or usual medications, nausea, shortness of breath, cold sweat, and sudden dizziness. Some people may suffer a heart attack without having any symptom. There are modifiable risk factors and non-modifiable risk factors for heart attack. Modifiable risk factors are risk factors that you can control, treat, or modify. You can lower the risk of heart attack by managing modifiable risk factors such as smoking or exposure to secondhand smoke, high blood pressure, high blood cholesterol or bad cholesterol, diabetes or high blood sugar levels, obesity, and lack of exercise. Then, there are also non-modifiable risk factors which cannot be changed, such as age, gender, ethnicity, family medical history, and menopause. Knowing one's risk factors and managing them can help to increase the chances of better heart health as well as lessen the risk of heart attack. Let us now go through these risk factors in detail to see how better control of them can improve your heart health. Smoking can damage the lining of our blood vessels, which will cause vessels to constrict and narrow. The risk of heart attacks in a smoker is three times more than that of a non-smoker. If you have been smoking, now is the time to quit! Not only will you be improving your heart, lungs and overall health, you will also be protecting your loved ones from exposure to secondhand smoke. Blood pressure is the force that the moving blood puts on the artery walls. When the blood pressure is high, there is added pressure on the artery walls, causing damage to the artery, and this attracts cholesterol and other materials to form fatty plaques in the arteries. Generally, a blood pressure of 140 over 90 or higher for an average adult indicates high blood pressure. It is a good practice to do home blood pressure monitoring to ensure that your blood pressure is under control. Record your readings twice a day if possible. Cholesterol, a fat-like substance that is produced by the body or derived from food, is carried through one's bloodstream by special proteins known as lipoproteins. There are two types of lipoproteins. Low-density lipoproteins, or LDL, or bad cholesterol, increases the buildup of fats in the arteries. 
while high-density lipoproteins, or HDL, or good cholesterol, removes cholesterol from the cells before they are deposited as plaque in the arteries. The goal is to keep your total cholesterol level as low as possible. Some ways to attain this include a healthy diet which consists of more fruits and vegetables and less animal and saturated fats, regular exercise of at least 5 times a week and each time lasting 30 minutes to 1 hour long, maintaining an ideal body weight combined with cholesterol controlling medications. Diabetes is a disease in which one's blood glucose or blood sugar levels are too high due to the body producing too little or no insulin or it is not using insulin well. Diabetes is often a result of a diet high in sugars and fats, obesity and lack of regular exercise. Diabetes can also be hereditary. Diabetes can lead to other health problems such as stroke, heart attack, organ damage and diabetic foot. In order to beat diabetes, the best place to start is to make some changes to your lifestyle. Start eating right and exercise regularly. Learn the risk factors involved and take control of your condition through taking medications if needed and monitoring your blood sugar levels. Being overweight can cause many health problems including heart disease. The body mass index BMI, is a measure of your body's fat based on your weight and height. The healthy BMI range is between 18.5 to 22.9. Walking is the safest and easiest exercise for those who have an existing heart condition or just had a heart attack or heart surgery. One month after your heart episode, you should be able to exercise a minimum of 30 minutes a day for at least 5 times a week without any discomfort. It is important to gauge the intensity of your exercises by monitoring your pulse rate. The resting pulse rate, RPR, is the rate at which your heart beats while you are resting. To measure your RPR, place two fingers on your pulse near your wrist and count the number of beats within 10 seconds. Multiply this number by 6 to get your RPR. When exercising, your pulse rate should only exceed your RPR by a maximum of 20 beats. For example, if your RPR is 80 beats per minute, your safe exercise pulse rate should be less than 100 beats per minute. When you are exercising, do watch out for symptoms of chest pain, shortness of breath, giddiness, nausea, palpitations or abnormal heart rhythm, excessive cold sweat and excessive fatigue. Stress and tension can cause your blood pressure to rise. They can also lead to depression, anxiety, aggressiveness, defensiveness, and affect your work performance and personal relationships. You may also tend to overeat, resulting in obesity and higher cholesterol levels. When your body is producing stress hormones, your heart will pump faster and harder. This causes your blood vessels to constrict or narrow and thereby increasing the risk of getting heart disease and heart attacks. Therefore, it's important to maintain a healthy mind to have a healthy heart. To cope with or reduce stress and tension, be aware of what makes you uptight or stressed and try to control or avoid such situations. Learn relaxation techniques or exercises such as meditation, breathing exercises and yoga to calm your mind and body. More importantly, think positive! Currently, heart artery blockages can be treated with either bypass surgery or angioplasty and stenting. Medications are needed to keep coronary stents open and also to decrease the risk of recurrence of a heart attack. In some instances, medications are used to improve one's heart function as well. After a cardiac episode, Participating in a cardiac rehab program is one of the most important things you can do to improve your heart health. Clinical studies suggest that compared to usual care, cardiac rehab increases the chance of survival and reduces death risk and recurrent heart attacks. Cardiac rehab helps you to improve symptoms, cholesterol level, blood pressure, weight, psychological well-being and stress management, and exercise tolerance. In the cardiac rehab program, you will start off with an orientation and assessment where you learn more about the heart and heart attacks 
and how to modify risk factors to improve your heart health. You will learn that a healthy mind leads to a healthy heart. It's important that you know how to adapt psychologically to your medical condition and how to manage stress. The next step, which forms a major component of the cardiac rehab program, would be the exercises. A set of prescribed exercises will be recommended for you according to your condition. Your exercises will be closely monitored by our team of experienced physiotherapists and cardiac nurses. Medically supervised exercises after a cardiac episode are much safer compared to unsupervised exercises. It would be ideal if your family members can attend and learn from our Heart Saver course so that they can react in time in the event of an emergency. The course includes techniques of one-man CPR and abdominal thrusts, how to watch out for signs and symptoms of a heart attack, how to react during a heart attack, and the risk factors for coronary artery disease. Do approach our nurses to sign up for the course. With this, we have come to the end of our orientation video. Should you have any questions about our cardiac rehab program or video, please do not hesitate to find out more from our nurses.